composition with red, blue, and yellow is a post-World War I piece done in 1930 by Piet Mondrian. At first glance, to the average viewer, this seems unimpressive, it seems boring and simple and completely confusing. But after you understand some of the background information and some of the analysis that I'm going to give you today in this video, you'll most likely become impressed. And maybe, perhaps some of you will love it as much as I do. If you are new to my channel, I'm Mrs. Alder, an art history teacher, and I am obsessed with this subject. No matter what your level of knowledge with art history is, when you watch my videos, you'll gain an appreciation and love art more. Subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit the bell icon off to the side to get notifications of when I publish new videos each week. Art after World War I got a little weird. Many people were trying to process what had just happened and how humanity could have done such a tragic thing to themselves. A lot of the artists were processing this trauma in some really interesting ways. Various modern art movements challenged the status quo as they tried to grapple with their questions. And one of the main questions was, what even is art? Some of those movements during this time period were surrealism, Dada, Cubism, and that's when questioning art got real. What is it? What does it mean? And who gets to decide? Composition with red, blue, and yellow was a piece associated with the De Stille movement. It's a Dutch movement, and De Stille means the style. Now, while these other art movements were getting a little crazy with the elements of art and principles of design, De Stille decided to go back to the basics of form and color. So there are three things that they decided were important with art. The first is the use of only horizontal and vertical lines. No diagonals were allowed. Second, the use of primary colors. They could only use red, yellow, blue, black, and white. And then finally, they wanted to have a feeling of balance, but they did it in an asymmetrical way. So line, vertical and horizontal, primary colors, and an asymmetrical balance. Although still radical and very abstract, the visual composition of the Distill art movement was simplified when compared to the other movements of the time. The straight lines and primary colors are what Distill artists decided were the universal forms of expression. Pierre Mondrian is considered a co-founder of the Distill art movement, and composition with red, blue, and yellow is a great example of Distill art. So with this background knowledge, let's go ahead and dive in and do an analysis of this piece. Okay, the first part is line, right? Only vertical, only horizontal lines are allowed. No diagonals, no squiggles, nothing. Horizontal, vertical. The first thing I want to point out to you is, believe it or not, this is hand painted. Look at how steady the hand is on those lines. It's incredible. In our digital age today, it's hard to imagine that something like this could have been created without a computer. But when you zoom in, you can see the brush strokes. You can see that this is hand painted, which I think is incredible. But let's talk about these lines. <laughs> What's the point? The first thing I want you to notice is how heavy it is on the left side and on the bottom. All of the lines kind of draw your eye to that area. So it's very off balance, very off balance. Um, let's start with the horizontal lines. We have three horizontal lines in the piece. The largest one extends across the bottom. Um, what is the horizontal line? Like, what does it represent? Why use this? Well, horizon and horizontal have the same root. And it's, it's this word that helps bind us to earth. It helps connect us to the material world, right? But there's also this idea of the horizon, right? This idea of like looking towards the horizon, this idea of hope. And it's kind of this dividing line between the earth and the sky of the unknown in the heavens. And I think that's a really important idea, especially when we talk about this piece. So horizontal lines bind us to the material earthly world. Then we have vertical lines. We have two vertical lines in this piece. And the vertical lines do the exact opposite of horizontal lines. Uh, they're all about ascension. They lead your eyes upwards towards the sky, towards the heavens. It's this idea of lifting, of um, going up higher into the ethereal, into the unknown. Um, 
so we've got the ascension of the vertical kind of juxtaposed with the earthly of the horizontal. Keep that in mind while we talk about color. Red is the biggest color in this piece, so I'm going to save it for the end. Let's talk about the color blue first. Down in the left-hand corner, you've got a small rectangle, and it's filled with blue. Now, blue is a color of calmness, a color of equilibrium, a color of the earth. This is what earth looks like from space. So it's a very earthbound color. It makes us feel connected to uh, nature and our surrounding world. Looking to the right, you see a tinier uh, little yellow rectangle. And yellow, to me, represents the sun. It is joy, it's happiness, it's energy, right? And so we've got that kind of trying to off-balance and offset the blue. And then taking over the majority of the space is this red color, which is the marriage or the mating of these two ideas. The connection between the earth and the heavens. It's the sunrise. It's the sunset. It's that deep red. Um, it's courage. It's passion. It's where you meet in the middle. It's like where they both come together. Finally, let's talk about balance in this piece. It is clearly asymmetrical. There is no <laughs> symmetry to this piece at all. It feels very unbalanced and yet it works. I don't know how it happened, but you look at this piece and you don't feel weird. You feel very balanced. You feel equal. It works. And I don't know how. So something to mention about Piet Mondrian is he hated the messiness and randomness of nature. It was something that made him really uncomfortable. So he came up with this idea that if you contemplate it long enough, it will become balanced. If you spend time with the piece, it becomes balanced. The more you look at it, the more you get this sense of stability and calmness and balance, just like how you can with nature, as long as you just spend time with it. So why do I like this piece so much? As with any piece, I tend to go one step further. It's the so what. Like, okay, cool, that was awesome, but why? Why does it matter? Why do we create art like this? And this is a personal reflection for me, but I just love the feeling of stability, especially in all the chaos in which we currently live. Stability is what I crave. I crave balance, and this piece gives it to me. The other thing this gives to me is the idea that two opposing forces can reside in the same space in harmony together, and I love that idea. There's nuance here. There's the idea that two rights can reside together, that two ideas that maybe conflict or don't agree with each other balance out when they come together. When the horizontal and the vertical lines converge, there's balance. When the blue and the yellow combine to make an explosive red, there's balance and it makes sense. And to me, that's really comforting. It brings a sense of stability and balance into my life. I hope you learned something from this video. If you liked it or enjoyed it in any way, go ahead and click the like button. If you have any comments, thoughts, or insights, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions about composition with red, blue, or yellow, or the distrill art movement, write those down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon off to the side so you can get notified of when I publish a new art video each week. And I promise the art just keeps getting better.